So I, I'm going to bring up this one part because so somebody asked Sheldon Keefe out to practice. This is from Dave McCarthy on the ups and downs of the team. Our guys know what's at stake, but they're a little confused. They're a little confused themselves as to why we've been so hot or cold, uh, hot and cold. For me, it starts and ends with how engaged we are and how competitive we are. When we do that, it's amazing how much better everything looks. I, I honestly think that's what it really comes down to. In terms of, okay, there's days, there's times where the goaltending was not good. That really has not been a factor. Well, what? Since Freddie came back and he was shaky? Other than that, their goaltending has been has not been the problem. I no. honestly do think it's the effort. Like, they look really sluggish, especially at the start of games. And I, I feel like when you're playing catch-up, or when you don't start off right, it's so hard to just flip a switch. And I feel like this team sometimes, they just feel like they can flip a switch because, you know, in the past, they could, they've been down and they can score three or four goals in a, you know, in a stretch of the game. Like, they can't. I think teams are finally realizing, like, we can, we can finally figure out a way to stop this team if we, A, as Jake mentions, play the neutral zone trap. Or keep them to the outside because they don't really have great shooters. As no. So their their chances are coming from that. Like they're not taking point shots. They don't Teams have- are starting to realize that you could lean on the Leafs, and I'm not talking about being physical or any of this BS that fans bring up. If you lean on them and put pressure on them early, they're just gonna crack. The coach isn't gonna save them. Keith said he goes in and reams them out, and they still come out and play like crap in the second period. It's at some point I mean, we've talked about this. It's on the players. You fired a coach because the team quit on him. Team it looks like it's quitting on Keefe at some points during the games. Like when is it on these guys in the room? So this it's, is this is actually the next part. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the Twitter. Um, the I stayed Twitter. off Twitter this entire road trip. Like it's an absolute. It's an even bigger cesspool than usual. It always is. So whether they win or lose, I mean, they can never truly win. So, no, Jake, and I know you. You've um, you followed this person on Twitter. So there was. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up the initial tweet that started this whole thing on on uh, on Twitter. So I think about. So this was from Jacqueline Taylor, uh, J X. Uh, I don't know how the hell you. I guess her uh, her Twitter handle is really hard to. Spell out. Got letters and numbers in there. Yeah, it's it's weird. So her her tweet was a uh, she tweets out this passage and she says, "I think about this player agent poll quote about cities on players no trade contract and so no, no trade clause a lot. Toronto. The impression is you can't miss a pass in practice without being questioned about it afterward. Um, so that was the initial tweet, and then. There, she puts up a screenshot of replies, I guess, to Mitch Marner. Like everyone, a bunch of people are taking Mitch Marner, and it's like it's terrible. Like what people are are writing on there, um, which just started another. It just went down this wormhole, where then uh, Steve Dangle went to Toronto, where the fourth. Line winger is a national ad campaign and status and statues are built for guys who never won a championship is hard to play in. So I think he's kind of guy that's been on the IR for three months. Just got a Campbell's soup yeah. campaign. Was, yeah. Right. Ilya Mikheyev was a leaf for literally 45 seconds, scored one goal, said, I like soup into a microphone and got a soup sponsorship. Sometimes I wonder how hard. Some in quotations NHL players would buckle in any other major sports league. Sorry, people watch you play. What people are missing here, I think, is there's good and bad. There are bad things about playing in Toronto, absolutely. There's so many guys here embrace and media and beloved forever for accomplishing practically nothing. It's a big market, there's good, there's bad. I think that's a perfect way to put it. Like people will Leo Komarov, Uncle Leo, that whole thing. He was embraced, but then when he's not producing, it's you know get Uncle Leo off the second line and remember that whole thing with Babcock. He wouldn't move him. He wouldn't move. Then he finally moves, and the Leafs were playing better. 
Um, but then James Myrtle chimes in. He's like, the media aren't that tough here. They're not. I don't think they are. Oh. I think the, I don't think like, it depends on what you mean by the media. If you mean like team beat. Yeah. Um, but then national reporters. No, but like talking heads and specific reporters. Yeah, of course they are. Yeah. Like radio hosts. You know, yeah. I mean, that's, that's people. everywhere though. Every, Panels every radio me. host yeah. anywhere is going to have complaints and complain. But I don't know. I mean, I'm not surprised by that. Like, the NHL is by far the mentally softest group of athletes out there. They're so soft. I can't, like, I don't know. Maybe this is just me. There's At no point did I ever want to say, man, I hope there's no pressure. I, I want to be watched by 500 people in the crowd. I want no pressure. Like, no, I want people to care about what I do. I want to, you know, feel like, there's something on the line every night, you know, cause I'm a person that, you know, it will get me up for something. Yeah. Um, NHLers aren't like that. That's why so many small market teams succeed. I mean, it's good if you're a small market team. It's not if you're a big market team. I mean, especially with the way the cap is too many guys are just so, so uncomfortable with being in an uncomfortable position. Like, guys will, like, we said it uh, years ago. Um, I think, uh, like, I've always said that I don't really have respect for guys like like uh, Shane Doan and stuff like that. Because, you know, if anybody ever complains about him winning a cup, like, no, the guy signed up to be a loser. Like, he signed up with the, with the Coyotes for five years when they were awful. He could have gone around. Yeah, he's had plenty of opportunities to go elsewhere to try and win. And he's just like, nope, I'm comfortable here. I like this. My family likes it. It's like, okay, then Thanks. you just proved like what's important to you. And I, I don't think winning is important enough to NHL players. Certain, yeah, I think a lot of NHL players, like I look at, um, let's say like a Jack Eichel, who signed in Buffalo. It's like, do you know what you're getting into? Does he look like he wants to win? Yes, because by the way he plays. But when you sign an eight-year deal, when you're a player like that... I don't get why guys do that. I mean, they keep thinking, like, maybe I'll, I'll give them some sort of leeway because it's kind of really changed in the last year or so with basketball where, you know, the players have sort of completely taken over in terms of, like, Kevin Durant tore his Achilles. He's got a max deal. He wasn't... The Knicks didn't offer him a max deal. He said... Okay, I'm out. I'll get a max deal from other teams. I mean, there's there's just no incentive because guys don't have the belief in themselves. Like, like think about it. If Connor McDavid tore his ACL, he's signing for whatever he wants. That like these, there's no such thing as like a career-ending injury unless you are have way too many concussions. You get a spinal cord injury or something like that. Modern medicine is way too good to the point where you can recover these things. As long as you get it done as soon as possible and you're given ample time to recover. I mean, look how many guys have torn their ACLs. Riley tore his ACL and was back with before the end of the season. Same with Marcus Stroman. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, I, I honestly believe that too. And the the part that gets me here. So you fall. I think you follow this person here too, Raf. Uh, Raf. Yeah, she's a great follow. She's a good fall, but yeah. this one, this she went down this rabbit hole here that I'm just like, you you know when fans just don't understand what the media's job is, when you see a comment like this. So her comment is, media here. So this was in response to Myrtle saying the Toronto media isn't tough. She's like, the media here is toxic, James. From the minute a player is acquired, it's an inevitability that they'll be alienated, targeted, and run out of town. It doesn't matter who they are their talent level, or their accomplishments, it's inevitable. I could sit here and list player after player that was targeted always unfairly by the media, but the best example is literally William Nylander. The media destroyed this player, not the fans. The media <laughs> is going to happen. Pause. Yeah. Rahab, I love you. It's not the media. I mean, the, the, no, the thing the is, the thing is, I don't necessarily disagree with her. No, no, no. But, I'm but, not. but... These players have accomplished nothing. Like, I'm I mean, thinking... I mean, the thing, the thing where I'll agree with is like 
bullshit stuff like the Phil Kessel hot, hot hot dog stuff like that's completely bush league. But if there's guys who are calling out William Nylander, he was shit last year. He was. He says it himself. Like they were talking about um they were talking about on overdrive. I don't know if it was today or it was on Friday. And O Dog and Ray Ferraro and um Dave Poolin were pretty much agreed on it. Like he's playing so well because he was so thoroughly embarrassed last year. I mean that's you the could thing. Not like if, any lower than what he No, did. exactly. He was horrendous. That's why like I see it both ways where people are like, oh, you got to trade him and stuff like that. Like, if you're basing your decision off of how he played last year, I don't blame you. But if you look at it like, okay, that is what he is now, then that's completely stupid. But, like, you have to judge these guys on a year-by-year basis. And you also have to judge them on how they performed. I mean, yeah, guys have gotten run out of down because they haven't done anything. They've been to, what, three first rounds, and they've lost in all of them. They've choked it away. And then this year, they they might not make the playoffs. I mean, I don't know. Like, what do you want them to pat them on the back because they're That's my putting up putting up numbers? I mean, it's about winning. I mean, that I is, don't care if like. That's what obviously they want. They want wins. They do not want to see. You know what? Who cares if Matthews and Matthews wins a Rock Ridge Shark? If they well, miss, that, that'd be nice. But I mean, be nice. But guess what? I'd rather win playoff rounds than him lose yeah. the Rock Ridge Shark. Exactly. That's the point. So this was, uh, you know, I, I said, like, you know, it gets pretty magnified because of how, how big the Toronto media is. I just say I don't think it's just that, though. I, it's not just about size. I find the media here will do everything in their power to not give the team or their best players credit. Other markets fawn over their best players. I just don't think that's the case here. How mm-hmm. in the world do you try to dress up the way the Leafs are playing as playing something. horrifically. You cannot. It's a, it's a lipstick on a pig situation with the Leafs. And real quick with Nylander, what I was saying about Raz's tweet. I'm not saying it's not on the media at all, but you can't say the fans aren't to blame for the image. They're, they're the worst. Right they're the yeah. worst. I mean, yeah. just like you were saying, Dave. Look at the look at the comments on Instagram. Yeah. I mean, like okay. sometimes, sometimes it like they are to they aren't like entirely to blame. But at some points, like you can make a decision why, or you can make a uh, come to the reality that people are obviously mad. Like with Marner, like I don't think it's ever gonna change my opinion on him. I still don't like how he did it last year. I'm not gonna stop cheering for him. Not gonna do anything. But of course, I'm not gonna hold him in the same esteem I did after he blocked that shot, uh, whatever it was, against the Bruins in two years oh, ago. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's different. Like you, like he showed his character. He showed what he's about. I don't care. That's in the past. Now I cheer for him. And when he's playing bad, like he is right now, where he is, he's called himself. Like he, he always says it's about effort and stuff like that. And on the power play, he's been horrible. Yeah. He talks about effort. Sorry, Dave. He yeah. talks about effort and then doesn't bring it half half the time. Exactly. I mean, he's I on think, one night. I think he's off you, another. You have such a low standard where, as long as you are visibly trying, you're going to be respected. I mean, look at Zach Hyman. He's probably it's he's probably stoop. the favorite leaf of like everybody. He's buzzing this it's year. Stoop. In any other market, he's not getting the praise no. that he's getting right now in Toronto. No. So I mean, this is, also isn't just a Toronto issue, man. Like, look no, at the Knicks. The Knicks get ripped every single day by not only New York, everybody. They're a they are, they are the oh, exactly. They're the biggest. They're the biggest team and arguably in North American sports, one of the biggest brands. They're worth about five billion dollars. They can't even win thirty games. They have. I don't think they've won thirty games in five or six years. So which. Which players, like I can think of maybe two off the top of my head that have been run out of town by the media in recent memory. Phil Kessel. One was Phil Kessel. And that's because Steve Simmons, not Steve Simmons, excuse me, the other one, Dave Festchuk, decided to be a dickhead in a scrum. Well, bo- both of them, but yeah, I, mean, I mean, that's Steve just an Simmons, isolated case. It also, was, it also wasn't really working for Phil. I mean, I wasn't like, I was pretty happy when he got dealt. Like there's, there's not one player I could think of where I'm like, Fuck, he left. We are screwed. Yeah, and one player doesn't make a team. And Brian Burke, when he made that deal, he's just like, Phil yeah, Kessel. That, 
That when probably didn't help. Out. That was a horrific yeah. deal. Let's call it what it is. Those players that were here, Dion Phaneuf's the other one I thought of, and he wasn't necessarily run out of the out of the town. He was the captain for a team that was absolutely atrocious for his entire tenure. Yeah, he his didn't help himself out with, with uh, it, for God's sake. He's yeah, the one that he, led the salute gate. So yeah, that that also didn't help. Yeah. Oh so, no, I'm not saying he's without fault. No, I but don't think. It, like I don't think two, they're blameless either. No. No, absolutely not. And I'm not taking the blame off them, but it's just. And Chris, and Chris, in our group chat, even brought this up. He thinks he actually thinks the Toronto media, like the the guys who cover the team, I don't think they're that bad. No. Yeah. If Howard Berger was on this team right now. If he was asking questions to Sean <laughs> or the players, it would be a lot worse. There are a lot of guys who... I'll tell you one thing. Just, just You want to look at terrible beat reporters? Literally, g- look at where I live. I mean, Frank Isola literally isn't allowed in Madison Square Garden. He covers the Knicks. He's yeah. hated by players. He's hated by owners. He's hated by everybody. Look at Manish Mehta. Every single coach... He either he either has he takes up personal vendettas against players. Oh, if you if he's someone that doesn't get the respect of a certain player or doesn't get the answers he wants or doesn't get the access, he will completely just bombard them with articles and stuff like that. I remember going through the process of hiring a coach and he just completely had it out for Doug Marone. Why? I have no idea, but it was Probably the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Like, it wasn't even a head coach of the team. It was a potential head coach. And he basically yeah. went on a two-week tirade about how he's such a terrible human being, what a horrible coach he would be, and how nobody respects him. And I was just like, Jesus Christ, it's not that big a deal. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you brought up – I'm sorry. I have a – I keep cutting Dave off. I feel like a dick. I'm just going to stand back here. Um <laughs> I think, well, you brought it up perfectly, Jake, is Dave and I sort of, when it first came up about this whole media is running people out of town thing, said we're both media, so we don't, we really have a skewed view of things. We do. Um, Dave, I mean, he works for one of the big networks. He also covers a team. I cover a team and I work for a league. And I think what's lost on some people is that there's more to it that goes on behind the scenes than just reporters asking questions and players answering them and then they go on their separate ways like these people have relationships the media members in toronto don't just show up in the room and ask their questions and that's the end of their day they have conversations with these guys they have relationships with them like if it's a perfect example carlo koliakvo came in and talked to us and he straight up said if somebody had written something bad about him say a steve simmons and he came in the next day to practice that player was allowed to just tear a strip off of him in front of everybody these media members don't get off scot free if you shit on a player. No, I've I've had, I've had that. I've had stories written where I've had to hear it from somebody. I've, I've if the player about, doesn't like it, they're going to let you know. That's I not off about, limits. I write about a football team, the Toronto Argonauts. Yep. If I, I I remember I wrote something about I can't remember who, or it was I actually sorry I didn't write it. It was Paul. You remember Paul. Yep. He wrote something on um, oh, there was a cornerback on the Argos, or who used to play for the Argos. The Argos signed his brother, mm. and, wrote, and we were and he wrote. I didn't see the story. I didn't oh, approve no. it. And like there was this was the time where I was covering the team. Okay, so he posted his Argos like uh, of, like why this signing was insignificant. I go into the locker room the next day, and this guy comes up to me respectfully. Actually, I was surprised. Because football players, you know, they have a way with their emotions. And he was just like, respectfully, I don't I, I don't understand what that Argo was supposed to, wait, what the reason was supposed to. And I said, Why, what that accomplished? Yeah, what it accomplished. Yeah. And I totally agree. I think when you go out of your way to bash a player and you're not providing a fair perspective, I think there's total reason to be critical. If you're going to take a pot shot at a player, you better show up the next day to feel the thunder yeah. from that guy. That's only right. And that's what the media does. Like, say what you want about Steve Simmons. As far as I know, he shows up and takes his lumps if he talks about a player badly. Same thing. Well, I don't know, Dave Festchuk. He might not. I don't really know. 
<laughs> I don't know for sure. Steve Simmons was a specific example where somebody said he has come in and taken it on the chin for stuff he said about guys. Like so, Jake, and and the thing here, Jake, you're not on the media side. Do you remember Jose Bautista's feud with the Toronto media? Yeah, it was in Toronto. Like this is it's nowhere close to what the Leafs are experiencing. No, I I can't really think. I honestly, I can't really think in hockey about guys that have had like legitimate gripes with media members. Like just Phil Kessel. Uh, Phil Kessel was the only one that that would talk, that actually came out and said the what you're saying about uh, Dion Phaneuf is embarrassing. He actually did a full like, and Phil rarely talked to the media too. That's part of the reason why he wasn't liked by the media. Do you remember the quote that before? Fast check went to Kessel. He asked Cody Franz in the same question. Do you remember that? Yeah. No. Cody Franz, I'll send you the clip, Jake. Cody Franz straight up told him to F off on camera. And he just didn't. He walked out of his scrum. Yeah. Like, th- just, I know from the outside, it looks like media is just allowed to take shots and get away with it scot free because they're accredited media. It's not the case. These guys can, it's behind closed doors because. Nobody wants that to get out. The Leafs don't want their players abusing media, and they don't abuse the media. But you're going to hear about it if you write something bad. Don't think that Austin Matthews isn't lighting up Steve Simmons if he writes something bad about him. Or he's ignoring him when he asks him a question. So yeah. now, I mean, that brings up... An, okay, so here's Chris and Schultz, and she had a good thing from Leafs Prax and Wandering. Austin Matthews on avoiding social media during tough times. If you're not feeling too good about your game or you may be or maybe you had a couple of turnovers, probably don't check your Twitter mentions after and see all the profiles with no pictures actually shredding your life in half. I don't I just I still don't get why that bothers people. Like this is where I think players, if you want to use social media as a way to expand your brand, you're that's, not that's thinking. what it is. That's what it is for anything. Yeah, not just athletes. It's activists, presidential candidates, uh, senatorial candidates, everything. Prime ministers, like vloggers, actors, actresses, musicians. It's a culture where people feel like they can say whatever they want because they're not seen. Exactly. It's never going to go away unless somebody finds a way to get rid of comments. I think won't happen. I think there are, I think Twitter, if they were smart, you post something on social media and you get rid of comments. Like, you're not allowed to comment on this. I think as a society, we don't really have, I don't think we should have the right to tear down someone's life because they're promoting something. Like, Mitch Marner promoting Red Bull. A lot of the comments are about how Red Bull is bad for you and all this stuff. I'm just like. Hey, tell those people to F off. You can tell Mitch's dad to F off, but Red Bull's amazing. So I, I think, yeah, I think if you're a lease player and you're saying, you know, you can't handle it because of the social media stuff or that stuff bothers you, go talk to the team and they will provide you. And look, teams, every time they bring in players, they bring in rookies, they have an orientation about social media. They have someone come in to talk to them about social media, how you should navigate it. How do you deal with people who are commenting on your stuff? Turn your notifications off. If you're a player on Twitter, do you need notifications from other people? Your phone would literally die. It would get so many notifications. Yeah. You know how many times Mitch Marner and Austin Matthews are being tagged on Twitter every hour? Yeah. Or stuff's getting liked? Yeah. And you know what? Actually, sorry for the putting this out there, too. Do you really think Mitch Marner is doing <laughs> Yeah, also that. Yep. Yeah. He has a company that handles a lot of his promotional stuff because of his charity and stuff. You don't think they handle his Twitter account? Guys, if you think that you, when you tag Mitch Marner, Mitch Marner is the one that's actually looking at it, or Austin Matthews, look, sure, they get the notifications, they see it, or someone tells them. But if you think that's actually going to make them somehow snap out of it and play better, you're, you're, you're totally misreading what social media is for. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't get why people like talk trash openly to athletes. I, I don't get it. <laughs> like thinking that they're going to get a response. Like even if you do, like what? Like I don't get why people are like, yeah, I got them to curse me out. It's like, okay. 
Like Kevin Durant is probably the one athlete. That I don't. I don't get why he responds. Get, like, like the guy averages thirty just, a game, he, makes forty million a year. I would guys, literally. I'd literally just be like, I bought a car that's worth more than your entire life. Like, yeah. yeah what? Got, I don't know if it's little man syndrome, but he's like. No, he, it's, he's got a billion dollars in the bank. He's a guy who he doesn't need to be yeah. in the mentions. It's his perception, how he thinks he will. I mean, it, it's because he's just like so thin skinned. Yeah, that's what I mean is he's just he can't just put the phone down. He no. wants everybody to uh, love him. And um, yeah. yeah, I mean, you're never going to be liked by universally. He, by everybody. He cares too much about the opinion of others. Exactly. exactly. 